everyone, Timo here. So you're probably clicking this video for two reasons. One is because I'm a crack kid and yours truly. And the other is that your exams are coming and you see someone like me who's able to somehow hold it all together. And so yes, from the thumbnail, you will see in the week up to O levels, I had 51 hours of YouTube watch time. In spite of me finding every single way to ruin my future, I somehow managed to get 6 A's and a B. So these are the results which I bribed, I mean, sorry, let me correct that. I mean achieved on skill and skill alone. So you can pause if you want, but essentially I was able to get top 4 in my entire school. And I was able to get top 5% in the nationwide cohort. And so the reason I'm doing this is well, money. You know, I thought I would get some monetary reward for all these good results. But all I got was some new toilet paper or certificate, I'm not sure what it is really. And so I thought I'd just monetize my academics by making this video. Yeah. Okay, for me, the biggest game changer in terms of saving time is digitalizing my notes. Now, you can use any platform, but personally, I would use Notion because it is very well organized. And so although there is a price, you could just use your school email to get a free education plan, which is more than enough. But even if your school email doesn't give you the plan, I personally would recommend signing up for the personal pro plan, which costs like $4 a month, which is what I actually did because my previous school was too busy spending money on toilets. So I will organize my notes into pages like these. Now, typing may be slow to some of you, but you will get used to it over time, you know. Over the space of a few months, personally, I went from typing 40 words per minute to like 100 words per minute. And so in no time, your fingers will be the talk of the town. Wait, I only see two minor downsides to using digital notes. And that is one, when you are doing math and you have to make notes like this. But don't worry, Stockholm Syndrome will take over. The other problem people say is that it's harder to memorize stuff. And which it is true, because when you write with pencil, it's easier to record in your memory what you're doing, because you're using more effort. But personally, I think there are much more effective ways to memorize content than just rewriting your notes. And so let me show you some examples. Now, don't get me wrong, you have to memorize stuff, especially for humanity subjects. But based on my experience, you need to memorize the right stuff. Now, it may come to a shock to some of you, but if you memorize shit, you're gonna write shit. So while memorizing your textbook content isn't exactly wrong, you aren't exactly answering the question which usually wants you to evaluate and explain. And so what I will do is that I will write up the model paragraphs in preparation and memorize those paragraphs and then write it during the exam which is how I get better marks. And depending on the question, it may change but I just have to tweak a few bits here and there. And so I'm not sure if you've heard of this study practice but it's called Active Recall. Now if you don't know how to spell Active Recall, that's O-P-A-F, which is exactly what I'm doing. I'm putting my brain on the spot and recall as much of a model paragraph rather than just lazily scanning it, which is what most people do, but you'll come to the realization that this method is not really effective as it leaves your memory once you finish the test. Okay, so I'm on this random word document. You can use whatever document you want. And then on the other side, I have my notes. And so what I would do if I wanted to memorize this paragraph about internal and external security is that I will write it out. Okay, so after I type this out, what I'm gonna do now is that I'm just gonna block out my notes entirely and I'm gonna try and write it all over using my memory only. Okay, so I finished writing it, and so what I will do next is that actually I will just compare this paragraph, the one which is the model paragraph, as well as the one I just wrote. Now, there are some spelling errors, but let's be honest, that doesn't matter, because I am just going to delete this all anyway, once I'm done, and move on to a new point. But basically, what I am trying to do is I'm trying to see the points. What did I write here, which I missed out from the model paragraph? Afterwards, I will just write bullet points or whatever I miss out. And yeah, that's basically how I memorize it. So I think this takes about maybe 3-4 minutes and honestly, yes, I concede that writing this physically will help your memory more but in terms of saving time, I feel that doing this can save me like twice as much time per paragraph and so I feel that yeah, doing this will be much better in terms of saving time and it's still really good for actual, okay, I'm not joking when I say this but actually I never seen this paragraph in like one whole year I just pulled up a random paragraph and I tried to memorize it on the spot. 
And so I guess you can compare between the two, and it's not bad. So I say, yeah, I just tried this method on the spot, and my memory is quite good considering I just did it on the spot. So yeah, it's worth giving it a try. Is it a lot of work? Yeah, it kind of is, but I think it's quite worth it. Especially when your memory can last for like what? Two months? Like, I can memorize these points for like two months after writing and practicing like this. So yeah, it's quite a good method and it's worth a try. Just practice, practice. Your teachers have probably said it time and time again, particularly for maybe subjects such as math and science. However, while they are not wrong, what they tend to miss out on is what you should be doing after you complete the questions. So after you see whether it's right or wrong, you shouldn't just like move on. Like what you should try to do is see what went wrong and see the learning concept behind it. So I'm now here on my physics notes and in a chapter. So maybe one possibility is that during my practice, I think I came across a question about the effect of air bubbles in a hydraulic system. And so I didn't really know about it and this wasn't something I was aware of. So after I found out the answer, I wrote the answer down here so that I can memorize and know that next time, this is what happens if you have air bubbles inside your hydraulic system. And then there are also other things when other questions I come across, like why water is not a good choice of liquid, then it says very precisely cause rusting, also tensions lead to whatever. And so by exposing yourself to more questions and trying to learn what is interesting with these questions, you are able to get a bigger sense of what is going on and a bigger understanding of how to tackle different questions from different aspects. Okay, so for MCQs, try to score most as these answers are usually quite doable. And so what I usually would do is mostly elimination method. So usually your MCQ will have like five or four options. And so what I would do is I try to kick out the most redundant answer. So if the answer was like 19, 20, 21, and then like 15, I will just cancel the 15 right away unless I somehow get that number. And so I'm just trying to do this to increase my luck. So it goes from 20%, 25%, 33%, then it goes 50%. It's still luck, but you are increasing your chances. And there's this also interesting thing I found out. Now, don't take my word for it. But if you look at a scope of 5 MCQ questions, so like question 1 to 5, then 6 to 10, you'll notice that there's some kind of pattern. Like, you know, a DBD wouldn't be as common as like a DAB or a DAC. And if you get four same things in a row, you know that something is very fishy or your teacher is very fun. So in that case, if you see these patterns, try and make a guess. So if you had like, a uh, D A A D, you may have the thinking that oh maybe the next answer will probably be like an A. It wouldn't be like a B or C. Well, at least based on my experience, you know every teacher is different, so I cannot guarantee that a D A A D A will be the same for what your teacher thinks of. But there is proof that MCQs are not exactly as random as you think. You know B and C does appear more commonly, and so yeah, just try to use that to your advantage. But I would just recommend to eliminate first before going through these sorts of ideas. Now the thing with all levels is that most of the things you get usually have a reason. So when you see a question, they will give you some information and you generally have to use all of it. So let's say you have a math question and then they just give you a bunch of random numbers. Like even if you don't know what to do, just like subtract, multiply, divide, or do whatever. Like something can help you. And it's these small meta marks when you're in times of desperation that you need them the most. And so you know, just try and do whatever. And so let's say even for like essay questions, which are just one line, like let's say you don't want to do, like literally just write. Like just write I agree or disagree, and even that can give you like one mark. It's not much, but it's honest work. And yeah, if you don't know, like just try and think of anything, just vomit anything you can think of, and show that you have some knowledge about the subject so that the teachers can give you some amount of points. I don't know. Okay, so what I did and the rest can be said for the rest of my notes is that I compiled a Google Drive with all my notes and I put them inside just for you guys, you know, completely free you can access it whenever you want and all I ask of you is that you hit the like button and subscribe because it really is free like it's literally cheaper than a bag of chips and you can undo it anytime you want anyway, so yeah inside these notes, I have like 6 entire chapters of geography as well as a special set of notes for geographical investigation which helped me a lot and I don't mean to flex but I was the top student, so if you want to trust me on one subject, this is the subject. Now, these notes are heavily inspired by this brown book. It's $18, but I got mine on carousel for like half price. And basically, it contains structured answers. It's just like mine, except I made the examples more relevant and easier to remember, which is why it's heavily inspired, but not copy and paste. 
Now, you can also check out this creator called Bernice Loon. Her geography videos are good and they actually helped me doing my revision as well. So for all you Singaporeans, you probably had to buy this book for history as well at the start of the year. Now, make this thing as much as you can because those things literally have the model answers right inside there. Like my history notes inside the Google Drive are basically just that. But I just recolored it and stuff to make it more aesthetic and more easy to memorize and well organized. So yeah. Besides my notes, there's also people like Oversimplified, which you probably heard of. And although his content is not as in-depth, the clips are memorable enough that you get the general outline. Now, a lot of people complain that they memorize the wrong thing. It is where spotting becomes a very strong hack. And so let's say now, it's one day before the exam. You want to watch F1, but you also have exam. So when I was analyzing that CAB document, I realized that all the two essay questions, there will be one about World War II, and there will be one about the Cold War. And then for case study, you need to memorize two chapters for Cold War. And so using my brick brain, I just anticipate the four Cold War chapters and I anticipate the two World War II chapters. And so what happened was that the day before, I only studied three chapters. Okay, this probably sounds counterintuitive, but for me, if you are really that lazy and you can't be bothered to do anything, you can try and watch YouTube videos and see people go through interesting questions. And so when you see someone go through an interesting question, you just try and screenshot and write the answer down. And so you try and see what's the interesting concept you can learn from that subject. And that way you can watch a video whilst at the same time actively listening and learn something from the video. In terms of binge watching math people, I would say there's the Achievers YouTube channel, which although focus on A-levels, there's some good O-level stuff as well. And there's also this Overmark channel. But what is important is where you find your mistakes as well. And so, based on my research, there's this chem website called chemlecture.com and it's legit the only reason I got A. Like, shout out to that teacher. But basically, this Catholic high teacher has an entire list of chemistry videos on his website, which is completely free to register by the way. And you can binge watch all his videos and take down notes as well. Now, I can't say anything for physics, because I couldn't find anything. However, I did find a set of physics papers and so I can photo scan some of them and put them into a Google Drive so that you guys can check it out as well. And if you are tired on time, reading your answers can actually work. Like what happens is that you will just let it run the background and you listen to the answers and forgo doing the question. But if you take down the notes and what is interesting, you know, what is the thing you need to learn and internalize what is the interesting stuff, then yeah, it can work as well, especially if you are tired on time. Okay, so I hate to break it to some of you, but of the 51 hours of YouTube, only 20 of them were like memes and whatever random stuff and shows. Which, while it is a lot, it's not exactly what you are thinking. I ain't gonna paint a miracle story, like you have to do the work if you want to get away. But if you are consistent and you do try some of these interesting techniques, it allows you to save time for other things and try and give you more preparation as well. It's called smart studying. I know, very smart. And so, what makes up the other 30 hours? Well, a bulk of it is actually studying music, which is really underrated. So you can check out Spotify list by Thomas Frank, Ali Abdal. It's full of music, movie and stuff. And you can also check out my own playlist of some stuff I listen to, link in the description. Based on my research, music does indeed help you get into the zone and get more productive. And even if it's too distracting, there's no problem listening to your surroundings either. Okay, so some of you may have this perception that I'm just a giant nerd who had it easy and this is how I get to watch all my YouTube videos. Now this may come as a shock to some of you, but my PSLE score is actually below 200. Now this may come as a surprise to some of you, but actually my PSLE score is actually below 200. And I was below average basically, but now I'm in what, the top. 5% of all level code, which is raw A and below. I guess what I'm trying to say is that don't let the past define you and your perception around studying and challenges in general. But you are able to adapt, I can guarantee that. And you can always start now, so and if you do, I hope this video helps you find a clearer path. Now I realize that I'm uploading this in November when everyone has already completed their exams, but really this feels like memorization, how to tackle application questions, and even things like digital notes and buffing your MCQ. They can go a long way, beyond all levels, and extend into poly, university, or wherever. And remember that learning does not really end after all levels, and it's only going to get harder. And although not massive, 
watching 20 hours of YouTube a week before all levels. That's still quite a lot. And that's not counting the F1 race as well, which is another two hours. And now a key hack, which might I might not have inflated my watch time, is that I increase the video of the YouTube speed to like two or three times speed, which is extremely useful and you can watch a video about Ali Abdal. A fair enough amount of study, like four to five hours of high quality study a day is better than 10 hours of aimlessly reading a wall of text. And so yeah, that's all I have for today. Once again, my old level notes are in the description. Hope you enjoyed the advice I gave. And while you're at it, hit like and subscribe. It's free, it's cheaper than a chocolate bar, and you can undo it anytime you want. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.